in this lecture we will solve these two questions so let's start with the first one a mail order computer business has six telephone lines let x denote the number of lines in use at a specified time suppose the probability mass function of x is as given in the accompanying table so this is the probability mass function of x we have to calculate the probability that at most three lines are in use so in part a we have to calculate the probability that x is less than equal to 3 because it is at most so this is equal to probability that x is equal to 0 plus probability that x is equal to 1 plus probability that x is equal to 2 plus probability that x is equal to 3 so this is equal to 0.10 plus 0.15 plus 0.20 plus 0.25 and this is equal to 0.70 so this is the probability that at most three lines are in use let's move to part b In part B we have to calculate the probability that fewer than 3 lines are in use. So that means we have to calculate the probability that x is less than 3. So this is equal to probability that x is equal to 0 plus probability that x is equal to 1 plus probability that x is equal to 2. So this is equal to 0.45 Let's move to part C then In part C we have to calculate the probability that at least 3 lines are in use So to calculate this probability so we have to calculate the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3 so we can just subtract the probability that x is less than 3 from 1 to get this probability so this is equal to 1 minus 0.45 and this is equal to 0.55 let's move to part d in part d we have to calculate the probability between 2 and 5 lines inclusive are in use So that means we have to calculate the probability that x is between 2 and 5 and it is inclusive of 2 and 5 that's why i have put an equal to sign here and here so this means we have to calculate this probability so this is equal to probability that x is equal to 2 plus probability that x is equal to 3 plus probability that x is equal to 4 and probability that x is equal to 5 so this is equal to 0.20 plus 0.25 plus 0.20 plus 0.06 adding these we get 0.71 let's move to part e then In part E we have to calculate the probability that between 2 and 4 lines inclusive are not in use. So let's form an expression here. So if we define x by the number of lines in use then we can define x bar or you can say x complement by the number of lines that are not in use. So we can write it as number of lines that are not in use i'm just creating one more random variable here okay and capital x is equal to the number of lines that are in use so x bar will be equal to 6 minus x this is because we have six lines in total and this small x is the number of lines that are in use so for example if it's given that two lines are in use then this means that four lines are not in use 
Okay, so we subtract two from six, which is the total number of lines. So according to part E, we have to find the probability that X bar lies between two and four. And this two and four are inclusive. I hope you are clear with this transformation that I have made. So the only thing that I've done here is I have defined one more random variable. And I'm saying that if X is equal to number of lines that are in use, then let's take X bar to be the number of lines that are not in use. And the values of X bar will be equal to total number of lines minus the lines that are in use. And in the part E, we have to calculate the probability between two and four lines inclusive are not in use. So that means this is the probability that we have to find. So we can write here that X bar is equal to six minus X less than equal to four. And multiplying this by minus one, we get minus four less than equal to X minus six less than equal to minus two. And this is equal to probability of minus four plus six less than equal to X less than equal to minus two plus six. And this is equal to two less than equal to X and less than equal to four. So our problem boils down to finding the probability of this expression. We started from this expression and the problem boils down to finding the probability of this expression. Just a small clarification in the notation that I have used here. So this is not right actually. Uh, if I'm using capital letters, so if I'm writing X bar, then it should be X bar is equal to six minus capital X where these two are random variables. And if I'm talking about the values of X bar, which is equal to small x bar, which we can denote by small x bar, it should be equal to six minus small x. So here we had everything in terms of capital X bar because we were talking in terms of random variable. That's why I substituted this six minus x. So I hope this much is clear. Now let's find the probability that x is between two and four inclusive of two and four. So this is equal to probability that x is equal to two plus probability that x is equal to three plus probability that x is equal to four. And we are given in the question that probability that x is equal to two is 0 0.20, probability that x is equal to three is 0 0.25 and probability that x is equal to four is 0 0.20. So this is equal to 0 0.65. Now let's move to part F. In part F, we have to calculate the probability that at least four lines are not in use. So in part F, we have to calculate the probability that at least four lines are not in use. So that means we have to calculate the probability that X bar is greater than or equal to four because X bar denotes the lines that are not in use. Now we can substitute the value of X bar in this expression. So this expression will be equal to probability of six minus X greater than equal to four. And this is equal to probability six minus four greater than equal to X. And this is equal to probability that X is less than equal to two. So the problem boils down to finding this probability, the probability that the number of lines that are in use are less than or equal to two. Okay. And this is equal to probability that X is equal to zero plus probability that X is equal to one plus probability that X is equal to two. And we are given in the question that probability that X is equal to zero is 0 0.10 probability that X is equal to one is 0 0.15 and probability that X is equal to two is 0 0.20. And this is equal to 0 0.45. So that's it. We are done with all the parts of this question. Now let's move to question number two. A contractor is required by a county planning department to submit one, two, 
थ्री फोर और फाइव फॉर्म्स इन अप्लाइंग फॉर अ बिल्डिंग परमिट लेट वाई इज इक्वल टू द नंबर ऑफ फॉर्म्स रिक्वायर्ड ऑफ द नेक्स्ट एप्लीकेंट द प्रोबिलिटी दैट वाई फॉर्म्स आर रिक्वायर्ड इज नोन टू बी प्रोपोर्शनल टू वाई दैट इज प्रोबिलिटी ऑफ वाई इज इक्वल टू के वाई फॉर वाई इज इक्वल टू वन टू थ्री फोर एंड फाइव In part A, we have to find the value of k. So we are given in the question that probability that y forms are required is proportional to y. So let's write this information in tabular form. So let's make a probability distribution here. It's given to us that the possible values of y are one, two, three, four, and five. So here we can write one, two, three. Four and five, and the probability that y will take value one is equal to k y. So this is equal to k. This is equal to k multiplied by two. That is two k. This is equal to three k, four k, and five k. So these are the corresponding probabilities of these values. Now let's find the value of k. We know that sum of these probabilities should be equal to one, so we can write that k plus two k plus three k plus four k plus five k should be equal to one, as these are the only possible values of y. So these probabilities, that is, the sum of these probabilities, should be equal to one. So adding these, we get fifteen k is equal to one, and this implies that k is equal to one divided by fifteen. So this is our part A. So the value of k is one by fifteen. Let's move to part B. In part B, we have to find the probability that at most three forms are required. That means we have to find the probability. That y is less than or equal to three. So to calculate this probability, we can write probability that y is less than or equal to three is equal to the probability that y is equal to one plus the probability that y equal to two plus the probability that y is equal to three. And from this table, we can write these probabilities. So probability that y is equal to one is k, and k is equal to one by fifteen. So this is one by fifteen. Probability that y is equal to two is two k. So this is two by fifteen, and probability that y is equal to three is three k. So this is three by fifteen. So this is equal to six by fifteen, and this is equal to zero point four. So this is the probability that at most three forms are required. Let's now move to part C. So in part C, we have to calculate the probability that between two and four forms inclusive are required. So that means we have to find the probability that y is greater than equal to two and less than equal to four. This probability is equal to the probability that y is equal to two, plus the probability that y is equal to three, plus the probability that y is equal to four. Recall that probability that y is equal to two was two k and k is equal to one by fifteen, so it is two by fifteen. Probability that y is equal to three is three by fifteen, and probability that y is equal to four. This is y actually is equal to four is four by fifteen, so this probability is equal to nine by fifteen, and this is equal to zero point six. So the probability that between two and four forms are required is zero point six. Let's move to part D. In part D, we have to check if this is a legitimate probability mass function. So to check this, let's compute the probabilities for these y values using this function. And if the sum of those probabilities is equal to one, then we can say that this is a legitimate 
probability mass function and if it's not equal to 1 then it is not a probability mass function. So let's calculate the probability for these y values using this function. So let's write the y values and probability of y. y can take 5 values 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Using this function the probability that y is equal to 1 is equal to 1 square divided by 50. So it is equal to 1 by 50. The probability that y is equal to 2 is equal to 2 square divided by 50. So this is equal to 4 by 50. Similarly, this is equal to 9 by 50. This is 16 by 50. And this is 25 by 50. Now let's add all these probability values to see if the sum is equal to 1. So summation of probabilities for y ranging from 1 to 5 is equal to 55 divided by 50 and this is greater than 1. So that means this function is not a probability mass function.